YouTube what it do it's your boy black atheist rant and today we are back right today we will be resuming our journey through every page of the Bible right today I want to continue the series called the problems in Genesis right black atheist Bible study if you will and today we have Genesis chapter 14 right and the reason why we do this, right, the reason why I do this Bible series is because people like to tell me and others like me that we take the Bible out of context. And so I threw my hands up and I'm like, cool. Right. If I'm taking the Bible out of context, cool, then I will do what I must do. I will read every page. I will read every line, every verse, every bar. That way, once I'm done and I and I talk about it, there is no more. I'm taking it out of context because I have read for myself and I have understood what the book has said. Right. Also, I would like to remind you that this is the book that Christianity wants us to base our entire existence off of. Right. This one book is our guide to the universe, according to them. And so. What we will not have is we will not have a scholar come in and help us with this. I don't want a theologian's help. I do not want a Bible scholar's help. I should not have to go to school and get a degree in theology to understand the book you want me to base my entire life off of. So with that being said, without further ado, let's get into the word of God. Genesis chapter 14, the title reads, it says, Lot's captivity and rescue. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Elisar, Chedalomar, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that they made war with Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shimibar, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zor. Right. It says all these joined together in the valley of Sidim, that is the salt sea. It says 12 years they served Chedalomar, and in the 13th year they rebelled. Okay. So we have. Sodom and Gomorrah, there's battles going on. Some of the kings are rebelling, right? A lot of Hunger Games type situation going on. They got like battles and wars over what we don't know yet. Let's keep going. It says, in the 14th year, Chedalomar and the kings that were with him came and attacked the Rephaim in Ashtaroth, Kerenim. Right. It says the Zuzim in Ham, the Emim in Shevet Kiriathim. I can't pronounce this stuff. Right. They should have put how to <laughs> they should have put how to pronounce it in parentheses or something, because these names are all over the place. It says in the Horites in their mountains of Seir, as far as El Paran, which is by the wilderness. It says then they turned back and came to in Mishpat. That is Kadesh and attacked all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites who dwelt in Hazazan Tamar. Again, they're fighting, they're rebelling, and I'm trying to see what was God doing during all of this commotion, animosity and beef. Right. What what why did God create a universe in which his creation would kill each other over dirt 
and grass, right? Why why do why does why does this excite God? Why does God let this happen? Why does God create us? I mean, why did he create these people with these desires and this sin? I don't get that. I I I I guess that's me not being able to understand God's will, but his will be done. But he created a earth. He created a universe. He created a world in which people would kidnap each other, hold each other hostage. You know what I'm saying? Rebel, go to war over land and resources when he could have just made enough land and resources for everyone to go around. Right. And he probably, you know, I just don't understand this. I don't get this, right? They say we sinned against God, but God created everything. Why did he create a universe in which people fight over? Like the things these people fought over does not matter now because all of them are dead, right? The, the grass and the trees they fought over is probably buildings and cement in the way. So it's like ultimately God created a universe in which we would fight over things that wouldn't exist after we pass away. Let's keep going. It says, And the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar, went out and joined together in battle in the valley of Sidim against Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, Tito, king of nations, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Elisar. Four kings against five, right? It says, now the valley of Sidim was full of asphalt pits and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled after the battle. It says, some fell there and the remainder fled to the mountains. It says, then they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their provisions and went their way. They also took Lot. Abram's brother's son who dwelt in Sodom. So Lot was in the midst of all of this. And after the battle, after the dust had cleared, after the beef, right? They captured him and they took him with them. It says, um, they also took Lot, Abram's brother's son who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and his depart and departed. They departed. Okay. Then one who had escaped came and told Abram the Hebrew for he dwelt by the terebinth tree of Mamre. The Amorite brother of Eshkar and brother of Aner. And they were allies with Abram. It says, now when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive. Okay, I want to pause right there. Because at the top it says, they also took Lot, Abram's brother's son. At the bottom it says, Abram heard that his brother was taken captive. This, is, this whole story is about Lot's captivity and rescue so ladies and gentlemen is lot abram's brother's son or is lot abram's brother right i if this if these verses are talking about the same person which is lot then they are misconfused they are misconstrued this is a misunderstanding on the bible's part right every word is inspired by god and this is an error because how can lot be abram's brother and abram's brother's son if these two verses are both referring to Lot, then this is a contradiction and this doesn't make sense. My bullshit detectors going off, right? Let's keep going. It says he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house and he went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night and he and his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Hobah which is north of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot again, referring to Lot as Abram's brother. But at the top, it's Abram's brother's son. Y'all make sure y'all lock in. Now. Right. It says brought back his brother Lot and his goods, as well as the women and the people. It says, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheveh, that is the king's valley. After his return from the defeat of Chedorlaomer and the kings who were with him. Right. It says, then Melchizedek, 
king of Salaam, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. Now look, it said God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. The whole, I want y'all to understand this. The whole world is in God's hands, right? So as they were going to war and rebelling against one another, God intended on that to happen. That is what God wanted. He wanted people to die. Right. Innocent people who were forced to follow their master or their king or whatever. Those people sacrificed their lives for what? Ultimately, the people that died during this battle. You know what I'm saying? There are just those are just pawns in God's hand to get to what? What? What exactly are what exactly does God have to say for himself? Right. Big Jeezy needs to come and explain why he created a universe in which people would go to war. And fight each other and kill each other. You cre <laughs> The trip part is this, y'all. God said, be fruitful and multiply. And then chapters later, he's, he's allowing this to happen. Because this says, possessor of heaven and earth. He has the whole world in his hand. So why would you command us? Why would you give us instructions to be fruitful and multiply? And then you give us scenarios. You give us scenarios in which we would kill each other over plants dirt rocks right areas of land that doesn't make sense to bar right that don't make sense to me blessed be abram of god most high possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be god most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand now i now this i want to lock in on this part right here because it says who has delivered your enemies into your hand? God delivered Abram's enemies into his hand. And I'm like, well, first of all, you created his enemy, right? You created everything, including the person that he doesn't like, including the people that captured his brother slash nephew, right? Why did you create their enemies? Why do you get the credit for delivering their enemies to them when you should also be getting the credit. You know, I'm cool with you getting the credit for that, Yahweh and Big Jeezy. I'm cool for y'all getting the credit for that. But I also want people to give y'all the credit for creating their enemies. You see, they love to give credit to God when it turns out in their favor. But they never want to say, well, who created my enemy? Right. You delivered Abram's enemies into his hands. Yet black people were slaves for 400 years. Why didn't you deliver our enemy into our hands? Right. It didn't take him 400 years to get his uncle or his nephew back. Right. How many times have you delivered my enemies into my hand? Why do I even have enemies? Right. Why were black people slaves? Why would you deliver Abram's enemies into his hand and then not deliver ours into our hands? Right. If you're going to start, if you're going to go down this road of helping people and intervening and showing your works. Cool, God. Cool, Yahweh. Cool, Big Jeezy. But I want you to be consistent. Right. I don't want you to pick favorites. I want you to bless everyone equally or don't bless nobody at all. Amen. Am I talking? Am I? Come on. It says, and he gave him a tithe of all. Now, the king of Sodom said to Abram, give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. Now, notice how they refer to the persons, right? The, the men and women who are under them, right? They trade them out like goods. They're trading people for goods, right? They're talking about, hey, you give me the people. I give you some 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 canned some canned fruit and shit like that. Like these people are like these people are property in this book. If you were not a king or a high priestess, you're basically property because they can trade you out for a loaf of bread, for a cup of wine. Look at it. It says, give me the persons and take the goods for yourself as if these people, who are they? They don't matter. Now, did y'all notice how at the top it, it numbered it? No, hold on. At the top, it named every king that fought. And it numbered every servant that was on, that there was born in Abram's house, right? Every last one of his servants, they counted them, 380. And the women barely get names. Who are women? How many women were around during this time? It doesn't name them. It doesn't care about them. How can a woman read these pages and still say, I'm going to give my life to Christ? How can women read this book and say, 
This is a God that loves me. You don't, y'all don't even get names. Y'all don't even get numbers. You know, the men get numbered and the king is getting named. Y'all don't even get names in the book until like what? 40 chapters alone? Come on now. Right? It says, give me the purses and take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say I have made Abram rich. Except only what the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with me. Enter, Eshkal, and Memre. Let them take their portions. Right? So, um, the king of Sodom offered Abram what, what they had won from the battle with Shedalomar and other kings. And Abram said, no. I have God on my side. I don't need none of these things. The trip part is, Abram doesn't want any of these um spoils after the battle of Sodom and Gomorrah right? he doesn't want any of these spoils because he has God on his side yet instead of but my, my thing is why didn't you just ask God to go get Lot back why didn't you ask God to get Lot and bring him to you right see you had to get 380 you had to get 380 of your servants and go do it yourself while simultaneously having God on your side that doesn't add up Either you have God on your side and you can do all things through Christ and all this shit and God can just snap his fingers and ask, you know, because this is the same God that gave you land. Abram inherited Canaan in chapter 13. So God can give you land, but he can't help you get your, your brother slash nephew back. If you could have just, why couldn't you have just asked God to bring your nephew to you? Why couldn't you have just asked God to bring your brother Lot to you, right? Instead, you put your servants in harm's way to get him back. And then when it comes time to get some of these spoils, oh, I have God on my side. I'm 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 a part of God's the most highest club, right? That's crap. Either you a part of the club or not. What are the benefits of being a part of the club? You mean to tell me I get to claim to be in this group that are fav this this group that's favored by God, and yet when something happens, like someone in my family gets captive, they get caught, they get captured. Oh, God can't help me. With that, I got to go get other people. And then the trip part is you use your servants to get Lot back. And then you gave all the credit to God, Abram. Abram. God gets all the credit whether he helps or not. Whether God steps in or not, he gets all the credit. I think that's just fucked up and sick. Right? God always gets the credit. He gets the credit where the credit is not due, y'all. But that's the end of chapter 14. You know what I'm saying? A lot of fighting going on. People getting captured, people not, you know, women not getting names still, but men getting numbered, you know, same old, same old. I hope if you enjoyed yourself, like, subscribe if you want to find your way back, you know, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you make sure you got the post notice on so you can know when I post videos. Um, yeah, we're going to keep this thing going. My goal is to go through every chapter of this book, right? I want to read every page and I hopefully if this if, if you're into this type of thing, cool. If you're not, just watch the other videos. But this is for people who may not want to read this crap. This is for people who may not, you know, they want to hear me talk, but they want to hear me talk shit about this book. I got you. That's that's what I'm here for. Right? This book is crap. And we're gonna prove it one page at a time. Peace.